after a long wait that seemed forever, we finally have another look at what's to come in House of the Dragon Season 2, with not one, but two new trailers. One focusing on the greens, and one on the blacks. I'm not sure why people were surprised we got one for each team, as from a marketing point of view, it's a great way to utilise the way in which the fans and the viewers tend to pick a team. Both trailers do have unique content, but also some key moments that cross between the two. So let's start off by looking at the green trailer. We open up with a voiceover from Alicent, giving us a brief overview of the events that have just passed in House of the Dragon Season 1. King Viserys is dead, and the realm was previously at peace. It appears she is talking to Laris, and in my view, does look a bit tired, as if the reality of the situation has now begun to catch up with her. This is then followed by a really cool shot, where we see Aegon's golden dragon banner unfurled on the walls of the Red Keep for the first time, establishing how Aegon truly now has control over King's Landing. What's interesting in the following few shots of Rhaenyra is that they are dubbed with Alicent saying how, on his deathbed, Viserys knew people would never accept Rhaenyra as queen. What I find interesting about this statement is, during Viserys' death, it is easy to understand to some extent why Alicent perhaps got the wrong message as Viserys was very incoherent, but it seems she really is doubling down and perhaps injecting her own beliefs into Viserys' supposed intentions. It's easy to understand why Alicent misunderstood Viserys, as he was dying after all. But I think this statement really tells us more about what Alicent personally believes than the reality of it. In all, she's using it to justify the idea that Viserys wanted Aegon to succeed him. Following that, we then end this sequence with our first look of Aegon seated upon the Iron Throne. We then have two shots of what appear to be King's Landing, getting into a war footing, preparing ballistas ready for a dragon attack, with Arik Cargill seeing over it. This then cuts to a shot of Daemon, I guess on the way to Harrenhal. This is one of those shots that was actually in the first teaser trailer from a few months ago and was hotly debated as to what it exactly was. But I guess the presence of Daemon in it indicates that it must be somewhere on the way to Harrenhal. We then have a look at Aegon on Sunfire, followed by a shot of what I am assuming is Rook's Rest, which comes into play in more detail later in the trailer. We then have this shot of a hooded person bribing a gold cloak. As it's a gold cloak, we can assume this is King's Landing. And while we can't tell who is bribing the gold cloak, I think there are two good guesses of who it could be. Firstly, it could be related to blood and cheese, possibly, with them bribing their way into the castle. But given it's a gold cloak, it could also be Damon, especially as Hood looks very similar to things Damon would wear in season 1 when going clandestine. Either way, I do think it could be blood and cheese related, as it could be Damon coming into the city to arrange it. Specifically, because this is all followed up by a shot of shadowy figures moving through a tunnel, with Egon's voiceover talking about how, if you plot against the king, he will pay you back a hundred times over. In fact, I love this shot of Egon's crown mounted to his helm. Of course, kings wear crowns in battles but I'd never considered how they would actually practically go about doing that. Seeing Aegon in full armour is going to be great, and a massive contrast to what we've seen of him so far. This is all followed by shots of Aegon and Sunfire in the Dragon Pit, perhaps getting ready for Rook's Rest. Aegon's voiceover here seems to imply he's fed up with people doubting his ability and courage as a fighter, and wanting to prove them wrong. I suspect maybe the likes of Alicent will try and dissuade him from personally going to Rook's Rest, but he will want to use it as an opportunity to prove himself as a warrior and a king. I believe this shot here is Daemon arriving at Harrenhal, unexpectedly, given it's the dead of night and how there are guards rushing around as he approaches. All this is followed by some shots of Daemon sulking around Harrenhal in the dark. I assume this could potentially have something to do with Alice Rivers, because at this point he's not in his armour, and the weather is very different, so it's likely sometime after the previous shot of him arriving, meaning he would have time to have settled in and have got to know Alice somewhat. All this is then followed by shots of Aemon talking to Kristen Cole about fighting Daemon, is a challenge he welcomes, which is really setting up the rivalry between the pair, which is one of my most anticipated moments I want to see in the show. The way in which Aemon talks with a sense of arrogance and confidence to me suggests that he has in fact embraced what happened at Storm's End and the death of Lucerys, and I suspect he will not claim it was accidental, but rather own it 
and we will get some kind of scene like in the book of Egon and Eamon's celebration. We then get some shots which are 100% from Jaehaerys' funeral after Blood and Cheese. It's interesting that the small folk seem to be quite upset about the death. I know many fans were worried that they were not going to have the population at King's Landing, low-key supporting Egon at this point, as implied to some extent in Fire and Blood, but overall I think they will keep the mood of the small folk balanced at least this season at the very least. We now have a shot from the build-up to the Battle of the Burning Mill between Houses Blackwood and Bracken, one of the most underrated battles of the war. It's a really cool fight, bloody with lots of action, and is one of the first real battles of the war, even if it is a small one. It's often overlooked, especially this season, by the hype for Rook's Rest. Don't get me wrong, I can't wait to see Rick's Rest, but I think the Battle of the Burning Mill is going to really catch a lot of viewers off guard with how good it could be. This is followed by a shot of Kristen Cole walking away from what I assume is the beheading of Lord Gunther Darkland after the Greens have captured Duskendale. Now this shot of a woman carrying a bloody towel has a lot of people confused as to what it means. But my guess here is that it is the direct aftermath of blood and cheese. Given the shot look of the woman carrying the towel, you can tell something horrific has happened, especially when you consider Otto's voiceover talking about the path of victory being one of violence. Oddly, this moment with Egon saying, good, to war then, is my favourite bit of the whole trailer. Tom Glincarney does a great job with that one line, just showing how Egon has changed this season. He's grown more confident and self-assured. I really think him and Ewan Mitchell are going to be one of the highlights of this season in terms of their performances. We then have some shots of Vagar and Eamon at Rook's Rest, followed by Cole and the ground battle. It just goes to show the scale this battle is going to be, both in the sky and on the ground. As I think, in terms of the book, the ground part, specifically Kristen Cole's role in it, often gets overshadowed by the outcome of the dragon battle. This is all followed by a shot of the duel of the Cargill twins on Dragonstone, reportedly one of the most legendary duels in the history of Westeros, with it being talked about by characters during the main book series, with it going down in legend, with songs written about it. Again, this is another really overlooked moment that I think will be a highlight of the season for many. This moment with Alicent, to me, really shows how this season she's really going to be questioning who she is, and what her role in events has been, and if it all really matters. I think it's going to be an interesting contrast with her outwardly acting very self-assured and confident in front of the likes of Egon and her father, but inwardly she'll be feeling very different, especially after Blood and Cheese. And with that ends the green trailer. Now, the black trailer follows a similar format to the green trailer, with a few of the same shots with different voiceovers and shots from the blacks giving the other half of the story, really setting out Rhaenyra's claim. I would love to see a version of this trailer where both are cut together into one big trailer. I'm not going to go over the parts of the trailer that were in the green version, just the different stuff. The opening shot is of Lucerus' funeral, with most of the blacks present, which implies that Rhaenyra does find his body, which is something we don't know for sure in the books, with many different tales of what happened. Rhaenyra's voiceover, much like Alicent's in the green trailer, sets out the basic fundamentals of her claim. She was firstborn, and Viserys' chosen heir. Now, I adore this shot of Rhaenyra. I think flying to Harrenhal on Syrax, as for the first time on TV, we're actually getting a look at the Isle of Faces, which is an important place in the books that we never see in the TV show. I didn't expect to see it in House of the Dragon Season 2, and it's a very nice surprise indeed. What I find interesting about Rhaenyra's language during her voiceover is she never acknowledges Egon as her brother, or her father's son. To her, He's Alicent's son, and that's it. Which does seem a bit different from the book, where there is definitely some sort of very basic level of acknowledgement that there are siblings. But given Alicent and Rhaenyra's relationship in the show, it does make a lot of sense for Rhaenyra to feel that way. We then have some shots of Rhaenyra having dinner with her dragon riders, specifically Adam Hull, Ulf White, and Hugh Hammer, the Dragon Seeds, with her saying she will fight and win this war. This leads me to wonder still how they will handle the sea smoke situation with Lainor still being alive, with the trailer giving us no real hints to it. Now this shot of the North is not new and was in the last teaser trailer, but what is is the following shot of Jace and perhaps Craig and Stark or a Night's Watch brother at the Wall. We know they're expanding this aspect of the story somewhat and the White Walkers will be making an appearance. I do wonder how much of Egon's prophecy is going to play into Jace's time in the North or if this is something they're never really going to touch upon again. 
The expanded northern storyline to me suggests there will be more done with it. We have a shot of Corlys then talking to Rhaenyra about the Hightower host marching and how she needs to crush them, which to me is perhaps setting up Rook's rest. This is followed by some shots of Daemon moving around Harrenhal at night in a storm. Given the shots of him arriving there from the green trailer, I think this is going to be just after he lands, which is why he's so on edge and on guard. I'm not sure, but I guess at this point Harrenhal is Larry's strong seat, so we'd have no idea what kind of welcome he'd get. This is followed by a new shot at Jaehaerys' funeral. I am surprised how many shots of this we got from across both trailers. I assume they would want to keep blood and cheese under wraps for a lot of the show only fans. Now this shot of Baylor on Moondancer was in the teaser trailer from a few months ago and there was a lot of speculation that she would be part of the Battle of Rook's Rest, which is a big departure from the books. Given these extra shots from the new trailer, I think it's looking more likely that this may actually be the case. However, we can't say yet the extent of her role. She might very well just be watching and not part of the dragon battle itself. I could also see them going down the road where Rhaenys sacrifices herself so Baylor can escape or something along those lines. This shot of Aegon beating someone is also very interesting, with lots of people seemingly unsure what's going on, but I'm thinking this is directly post Blood and Cheese, and Aegon is trying to beat information out of a captured person with some kind of involvement in it. Perhaps maybe the gold cloak who was bribed? Maybe in the show Blood and Cheese don't make it out the Red Keep and it could be one of them. The black trailer also has this shot of Aemon with a mural in the background, which to me looks like it could be the burning of Harrenhal, which is interesting, as logically the only place I can picture it being is at Harrenhal itself. But timeline-wise, that doesn't make much sense with what we know this season's going to cover. Another idea is there could easily be a mural of Aegon's conquest within the Red Keep, which I guess does make more sense. I really like both of these trailers. They both do a really good job at putting the claims of each side forward, allowing fans to build their own arguments. In terms of the trailers themselves, I surprisingly enjoyed the Team Green one ever so slightly more. I think because Tom Glen Carney really did stand out with his performance, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does this season. From the Black trailer, I really liked the Harrenhal stuff, especially the Isla faces, and can't wait to see more of Harrenhal in general. Saying that, I was a little bit disappointed we didn't get a look at Alice Rivers or Craig and Start, but I guess it makes sense they want to focus on characters people already know. What did you guys think of the trailer, and what one did you like the most, and why? Let's talk about it in the comments.